stop intercepting. And when we go back, we will find out that we have no access to the internal dashboard that normally only internal employees should have access to. A couple of days ago, I decided to send this message over here to my Discord community, asking you guys if you have any interests in bugs that are easily like easy to reproduce, easy to understand. And I think that this will be helpful for me as a beginner and also for you guys who are also beginning your journey in uh, Bug Bounty. And you guys actually didn't disappoint. I've also received a couple of interesting bugs. And today we'll be depicting a bug that came from a friend of mine in the, in the Bug Bounty community. So go thank him if you actually learned a couple of things from this bug. So as always, we will start from the beginning and I asked the guy how he found the actual place where he found the bug, like how he has done the recon. And as you can see over here, this was the way he used Google Dorking. This is a simple Google Dork that looks for any website that is under google.com, like any subdomain and with the word login in it. And after that, the guy like just went through most of them and all of them and just looked at each one of them. And I kept like looking for interesting uh, endpoints or interesting things. And while looking into these uh, like websites over here, he found a really interesting endpoint. This is a simulation of the endpoint. This is not the actual one. I myself don't know the 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 different or the application. So this is just a similar thing based on the description of the bug. So over here we can see we have a welcome to <laughs> pawn me please. It's an internal dashboard employee access only, which means that if you don't have exactly if you don't have a employee email, there is no way you will be getting access to the dashboard. So what did our guy do? First thing, as always, you test with anything. So let me move myself first and then let's give them an email and we see. OK, over here we see we have an error, invalid email domain, only blah, 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 or this domain should be allowed. OK, we don't have an email with this one because let's see, let's test it. OK, so let's take this. And then we put it over here and we send it. OK, perfect. A one time password will be sent to this email, but we can't verify the code because this is not our email. We don't get the password. So what did our guy do? I would love for you guys to leave in the comment section right now, pause the video and tell me what would you guys do in this place? Or if you are in this exact situation, maybe we can find new ways of hacking this kind of stuff. So our guy went on and enabled like his proxy and then went on burp and intercepted everything. So now let's give it some random stuff. We don't care because we just want to test and we see over here. OK, the first uh, request that will be sent is a post request to the API login, which is normal. What we always should do is do intercept and then response to this request. So it doesn't only intercept the request, but it also responds and uh, intercepts the response because before it reaches the, the, the browser. We forward this and we wait. OK, as we can see over here, we have post API login, blah, blah, blah. And then in the response, we have a not found, which is normal because the email is not found. And the most interesting thing is the body of the response. As you can see over here, we have a message, which is also standard, but this is not standard or this is not good. Every time you see a false in the response, always try to change it to true. true. If you find a number one, change it to number two and so on. This is something that you should always test for. Test for. So over here, OK, this is a false. And if we forward it, we will get the invalid email domain that we got earlier. So let's change it to true. And let's see if this is going to change anything. Forward, forward, forward. And let's go back. And as we can see over here, we got to the second page. Interesting. We now got to the second page without having a valid email. Let's do this again. So so we have over here the demo code. This is the code that should actually work. But let's try with a, I don't know, one, two, three, one, two, three. OK, and then verify. And then the request gets intercepted again with a post request to the verify or one time password, which is also standard. We now intercept the response again. We forward it and we wait. OK, over here we see. We have a 404 not found, and then we have a also the same exact way of validation. 
So what did our guy do? I forgot to do this in the first one, but he's done it also. So we also add a 200. Okay, we changed the, the code and we also change this to true. And we forward it, stop intercepting. And when we go back, we will find out that we have no access to the internal dashboard that normally only internal employees should have access to. And then over here, we see like a lot of names. This is not the actual information and the actual dashboard, but it's just a simulation. And we see over here, we have some phone numbers, some emails, some PIIs kind of that are normally not meant for the public eye. And this is not good for the company. This is really bad. This is the main thing behind like having a login page. We can't skip it. So this is not good for the company having personal identifiable information of the employees get leaked is a really bad thing. So this is kind of a naive way of doing security in general. Trusting something that can be changed is not good. Trusting someone's word because we are now trusting the back end's word that it says that this is true. And then after that, the front end is the one who will be actually given access to the uh, this endpoint or this everything. And as we all know, we have the browser is running on our like on our laptops on our, our our machines and we have full control of it we have full control of the source code we can change it we have full control of what requests get in what requests get out and this is really bad if we trust this request normally what should happen is that the backend will give us i would say like a gwt token or a session token that will validate or authentic authenticate us and with these with this token uh, we the backend can validate each of our requests and know okay this is a request that came from this and this person but over here we see we don't have any token we don't have any GWT any session and we directly have access to the dashboard to the employee dashboard and okay so while doing this video I or making this lab I thought of other ways we can do this and there is a tool that I love using and this is a tool that I think is really underrated and can lead to so much bugs and so many interesting findings and we can do this without leaving the browser and there is no better tool than the actual chrome browser we are now at firefox but i think chrome is much better so let's go over there and run this whole thing okay now over here we don't have any interception we will not be using any burp and let's see what i normally do is that we'll go to the uh, browser dev tools go to source and over here we can go to fetch or any like breakpoint on any fetch and what breakpoints means is that we have over here the code so we have access to the front end code this is something standard and breakpoints is the okay let's say this line over here so whenever we reach this line the code will stop working and then we can do whatever we want to the code like we can add variables remove variables change their values uh move the code forward to see where the flow goes move i don't know they can do a lot of things so let's do this over here and with this over here checked we can say that whenever a request mostly an api request that gets sent by our browser to the backend like stop the request and break one to where it's it's done so let's do it over here let's give it a random email again you don't care send it and as we can see over here there is this uh fetch over here okay this is good so it sends the request to the login uh, api based url slash login as we can as we saw earlier and let me remove myself so that i don't bother you guys let's move over here okay so over here we can see we have the fetch let's move forward with this over here with this button you can just keep moving forward and see where the code goes okay we have the response and as we can see the status is 404 and okay it's false so this means that it's not okay so the exact same code that we seen earlier let's move forward now it saves everything to data as json let's go let's move forward and over here okay this is good so now what we do is that we check the result dot success the value and if it's good then we go to the next step and then we send the a one-time password if it's not then error and uh, just uh give us the result message like give us the error code basically 
And if we hover over the result or the success, we can see that it's a false. So over here, there is two ways of doing things. We can either change the source code and actually add uh, over here. We can just add some code and say result.success should be always uh, true. This is something you can do. And there is another way of doing it. Instead of changing the uh, source code, we can basically just let me clear this over here. We can just take the result.success and change its value. So results dot success and as we can see over here the value is false so let's let's change it to true and we if we hover over it now it says that it's true so if we get the code to run we go to the next step magic now let's do this again with the code one 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 i don't know any random code again we have a fetch to the verify one-time password let's move forward move forward does the same steps and we see over here we have again the result of success and this time the result is false because the backend told us that this one-time password is not correct so we do the same thing again result dot success equals true we enter it now if we hover over it we can see that it's true we run the code and Ta -da. Now we have full access of the dashboard without having to use any tools. And this is really interesting. Okay, I have one last thing. Uh, I think I've talked too much today, but I have really a thing or a tip that I found a critical thinking podcast. So shout out to them. I love their podcast. I love you guys. And thank you for all the content that you are pushing. I will leave a uh, link to their podcast in the description. So go sub to them and watch them even though you will not be understanding most of the things as beginners and also understand like i would say 20 percent of the things that they say but just hearing the mindset of big hackers helps you move forward and this is something that i believe in so the thing that we can do is that we do the same thing over here random email continue and we see okay move 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 and now we go to the check so there is this thing in uh in the dev tools called conditional uh, breakpoints. So we here we have a normal breakpoint. So we can just breakpoint uh, or the code will break whenever it reaches this. And there is this other thing that you can see is to edit the breakpoint. And over here we can do whatever we want. So we can normally what this tool does is that it says if this code is correct in this condition, then break. If not, then just keep going. And what this guy has done is that he would just say result of success equals true. So this is this is code that will be run. This is not the condition that will be. This is there is no condition over here. And then he will add something like this. The normally it's not true. It's not working. It's not going to break the the, the or it's not going to cause a breakpoint. And we just save it. And you see over here we have normal breakpoint. Yeah. So now let's stop the any XR, HR fetch and let's. So, okay, let's just enter a random email and then we continue. And as we can see, we move to the next step and we can do the same thing with this. I will not be doing it again because the video will be too long. But as you can see, this is a tip that you can keep in mind. And so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I have actually had a lot of fun making it. So the video wasn't actually going to be about DevTools, but while making it, I couldn't stop myself. I uh, wanted to show you uh, this kind of stuff or this kind of tips and I really love the dev tool so maybe I'll be making a video about it maybe I will be bringing people who actually know what they're doing and explain stuff better than me and if you guys have any interest in bugs that you would like to share please send me a message on twitter I will be leaving my profile in the comment section please also don't send any sensitive information please if you are going to share any bugs I beg you to not send me the name of the company, any endpoints or any screenshots of it. Just send me the description and I will be trying to remake the whole thing. And please join the Discord server if you would like to see other people because we have a lot of uh, really bright people and a really good community, people who actually help each other. So please join the community. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and see you on the next one. Assalamu alaikum.